learn one more remedy but before learning that remedy i want to share a case it was way back that that case i have solved in fact it is a submandibular swelling with which patient has came she was my regular patient she already had treatment for her respiratory tract affections and she was settled with medicines but one day she came with the sub submandibular swelling and it was very hard and she said that it had happened 10 years back also and at that time they have done the biopsy they found that it is only a inflammation of the gland and they prescribed me medicines for eight days and thereafter I, it was settled and now this has happened again so i looked towards the things and it was very hard submandibular swelling and she was having along with that little bit respiratory affections where there was a lot of irritation in the throat along with the some ulcerations in the mouth and she explained that whenever i lie down i used to get that lot of secretions are collected in my throat so stony hardness of the gland whenever are there you must there, there is always a caution that whether it is malignant that thought always comes because when the things are like that and there are many remedies for the stony hard glands the conaim is there then you have the calcarea pure where you can get the stony hard gland then you get the phytolacca very phytolacca decandra where you can get the stony hard gland but in this case specifically when i consider that rattling which is saturated in the pharynx associated with the stony hardness of the submandibular gland i thought of a remedy bromium and i prescribed bromium 30 for four five days for the patient and i asked her to come after a week and surprisingly after a week when she came the total swelling was vanished there were no glands at all the submandibular gland that was coming to a normal size and shape and even her cough has settled completely she was so happy that first time she felt very very clear in the throat so this remedy we have to learn because there there are a lot of remedies which comes closer to the bromium one is antim tart tartaricum because in antim tart it is lower respiratory tract affections are quite common where the rattling is there in the lungs and in this remedy the rattling is there in the throat and the level of pharynx so this is too important that one must check the chest whenever he has to prescribe the antim tart second important difference between antim tart and bromium is that antim tart the person becomes drowsy drowsy which is the dull drowsiness which is associated with antim tart which is not there with bromium and third important difference is that in antim tart the tongue is quite thickly white coated so you, it is very easy to differentiate but generally we never think of a rattling cup in case of the bromium so let us learn that remedy from the Allen's keynotes because very nicely he has elaborated the bromine. So bromine, the element, it acts best but not exclusively on persons with light blue eyes, flaxen hair. Flaxen means it is a uh, faint yellow or faint brown color, light eyebrows, fair delicate skin, blonde, red cheeked, scrupulous girls. So generally, it is a very good remedy for the girls who are scrupulous, where the glandular affections are quite common. Sensation of a cobweb on the face, and that is an irritation which happens to be there on the face. Boreta cob is the remedy, borax is mentioned, then grapatis is there, the cobweb-like sensation. And this, this cobweb sensation is because of the sensitivity or oversensitivity of the facial muscles. The fan-like motions of Alenesa and this is one more condition which is present in Antim Tart also, which is present in Lycopodium also and this is also present in Bromium. So that is not a differentiating point. But one can think if it is a continuous motions of wings of like a fan-like motions, Lycopodium is the one important remedy. In Antim Tart it becomes completely dilated over there because of continuous um, motion and in Bromium again it is a like lycopodium like pan like sailor suffers from asthma on shore and this is very close to the natrum sulfuricum that they cannot tolerate the seashore stony heart scrupulous or tuberculous swellings of the glands especially on the lower jaw and throat and this sentence has a meaning so you if you give a case of a goiter which is a hard goiter submandibular gland 
affected like a stony heart gland you must think about the bromium thyroid submaxillary parotid testis so this remedy is very typical of scro- scrofulous remedy diphtheria where the membrane forms in the pharynx beginning in the bronchi trachea or larynx and extending upwards the chest pains running the upwards so this is one more thing the ascending symptoms in the chest which are very typical with the bromium where you get this cough which is more saturated saturated in the throat membranous and diphtheritic cough much rattling of mucus during cough but no choking this is important much rattling of the mucus during cough but no choking which is there with the antim tart antim tart it is choking because it happens to be there in bronchi as well as lower respiratory tract so he has compared as in hepar in hepar and bromium the symptoms are very similar sounds loose but no expectoration very clo- very thing very common thing happens in the antim tart croupy symptoms with hoarseness during whooping cough gasping for the breath so croupy symptoms croup is nothing but the pharyngeal and laryngeal cough which secretes a lot over there and that cough showing the hoarseness over there or causing the hoarseness associated with a continuous cough dyspnea cannot inspire deep enough as if the breathing through a sponge or the air passages were full of smoke or vapor of a sulfur there is a rattling dyspnea with rattling sawing dyspnea with voice inaudible dyspnea with danger of suffocation from the mucus in the larynx so this is very important here the secretions more um, causing the obstruction at the throat level whereas in bronchi if, if it is in the bronchi it is antim tartaricum and this difference one should understand and for that purpose the clinical examination of the patient is very important then he has given one future which is very interesting the hypertrophy of the heart from gymnastics in growing boys and this happens number of time you can get such types of futures and from calisthenics calisthenics means exercises which are done for the purpose of beauty in young girls the remedy is causticum physometra whenever we think of physometra only one remedy we keep in our mind is lycopodium but this is one more remedy physometra loud emissions of the platters from the vagina like lycopodium and membranous dysmenorrhea like like canina so membranous dysmenorrhea generally happens to be there with the pcod cases more commonly polycystic ovarian disease and when menses happens to be there very delayed and at that time lot of shading of the endometrium happens to be there and that collected endometrium when comes starts coming out through the cervix it produces very severe spasm of the uterus and that type is called as a membranous dysmenorrhea cold sensation in the larynx on inspiration like rustox and sulfur and which is ameliorated after shaving so whenever the things the cold sensation which happens there inside the throat during inspiration and when it gets better after the shaving the remedy is bromium and if it gets aggravated of the shaving it is the carbovision relations compare in crop and crop affections the chlorum the hepar the iodum and the spongia out of them the iodum is again a remedy from the halogen group chlorine is the remedy from the halogen group heart goiter co- cured after iodum fluoride so this is again one future if heart goiter is there if iodum is prescribed it is not working think about the bromium these are the clinical hints one should not miss because these are the things which allen himself have tried in his patients and these are the things which are useful for the future generation one more difference he has mentioned over there and that is also important bromium has cured the crop after the failure of iodum so this is one more remedy for after the iodum fails the bromium is the remedy for crop failure of iodum phosphorus hepar spongia bromium specially in relapses after the iodum if there is a relapse again and again after giving the iodum bromium is the remedy and last difference which he has mentioned is very important one should keep it in our mind the chief distinction between bromium and iodum is the former that means the bromium cures in blue eyed persons and the iodum in the black eyed patients this is 
mentioned by the herring and this is the collection from the herring. So this is a wonderful remedy one has to learn and one has to utilize and if you do a clinical examination you never miss the bromium in your practice. So keep it in your mind in upper respiratory tract rattling bromium is the remedy low respiratory tract rattling the antim tart is the remedy. Bromium is comparatively fresh as compared to the antim tart. And bromium tongue is not so characteristic as antim tart is having the thick white coated tongue. So that's all for today.